Hey everybody, it's Eric Johnson from Airtay Throws Nation, and in today's video, we are gonna talk about four different throwers dealing with the stand throw. We're gonna look at four guys this time. So the reason that we're gonna look at what's happening with all four of these different throwers, similar but different, is we're gonna be looking at the delivery axis and the alignment of the delivery side in the throw. So first thrower, too active with the upper body. And what he's doing is is unwinding before the right leg works. Now that has a lot to do with how he sets up. That was better. That was much better. That's okay. And that's understanding actually how the upper body moves in relation to the lower body. So one of the core things is again, why we break the throw down into six pillars in the throwing chain reaction system. We're trying to isolate and teach the positions and movement. So he's doing something here we call a pre-block. I've mentioned this on other videos and we go into real big depth with it. It's not a stand throw, it's a variation and we limit movement because we're trying to create some specific feeling so that you understanding of the upper lower body sequence in the delivery position. So you wait. Yeah. You feel your hips, how they really ratchet back. So next up is our left-handed thrower. He's having a similar problem due to where the position is of the hips. His hips are shifting into the throw, so his alignment's off, and that too is initiating the throw incorrectly and is gonna cause the upper body to open too early, and then we need to fix that. That was better. So here's where you're gonna do, you're gonna see a couple of things. And because the hip alignment's off, you're gonna notice that's gonna affect the orbit. And that too, these are all reasons that are gonna lead to the overactive upper body. And that is gonna just wreak havoc on your ability to develop better positions in your throw. Our third thrower is gonna be an advanced athlete. And what we're gonna be looking at is Nate. You've seen Nate on our Instagram. Nate is a 64 meter discus thrower, but he's making some of the same mistakes that some of the younger guys were making, but he's just doing it in a different, more dynamic way. Looking at his build, you can see that he's a lot more muscular, he's more experienced, he's older, but we're kind of doing, he's actually doing the same sort of thing as our left-handed thrower. The hip stack is what we call it in our pillar five, six. We break that power position into two pieces. We're restricting motion so that we can create some specific awareness of the positions and also identify some of his flexibility issues. Our fourth thrower is Jason. He's thrown 65 meters. He's been to multiple US championships, competed internationally. And so we're trying to do the same thing, but you're gonna notice it's that hip alignment. So this is one of the key things that people get wrong when they set up their stand throws. So again, here we're doing some restricted motion throwing so that we can feel that timing between the upper body and the lower body. Does it work all the time? Well, yes and no. Sometimes it doesn't because there's strength factors that are involved in what the thrower can and can't do and those create some limitations so let's look at all four and we'll kind of point out that hip position of each athlete and kind of go through it in more detail Okay, so let's take a look at all four of them together. We got our thrower up in the upper left, our upper right, younger guys, our guys in the bottom. These guys are more advanced 64 plus meter guys. So what you're gonna see is some similar differences between all of them. So what we're gonna do is you're gonna see that he gets too active with the upper body and this thrower's hips move out of alignment. So this guy's got the right alignment. He's got to initiate the throw correctly with the lower body. And this thrower on the right, our left-handed thrower, Geo, he's got to keep his hips more under him because this is creating a shift, which is resulting in him opening the upper body. So remember, both of these throwers are getting their upper bodies ahead because of different reasons. One has the right alignment, doesn't initiate the leg right. One sets the wrong alignment, Geo here, where he can't move around because the hips shift, which causes him to have to react and open the upper body. Again, this is what we talk about inside the throwing chain reaction system. This is gets broken down into 21 different drills. And again, the drills vary on the skill level. So now let's take a look at Nate and Jason head to head. You're gonna notice that Jason actually has really good alignment, but the orbit's off. So now these are things that are gonna work out of sequence. We have to have those things working together. Now, every athlete's a little different. You're gonna notice Nate here, he's got 
the arms nice and long, he's got the higher orbit, but the hips are actually out of alignment. And this is what we talked about earlier, that he's got to have the hips under him. His hips are a little too forward, kind of like Gio was, but not quite as significant. Now, because he's a bigger, stronger athlete, he can kind of work through it, but he doesn't have a great stand throw because of that. And that's one of the things that we're working on. You're going to notice now Nate versus the young guy. Nate still gets his hips firing, and you're going to notice that, especially when we do it right here. Right, watch this position here as we go right there. Watch that upper body. So you see how Nate, look at the angle of Nate's knee, look at Nate's left arm, and look at our young guy. He's just e going right into the throw with the upper body, not getting the lower body. See how the knee's not ahead? So these are the problems. So how do we fix this? This is what we do inside the throwing chain reaction. If you guys want more information, check out that info. This is what's difficult about throwing. It's not just something you can figure out. Some people will have a more natural tendency, but this is super unnatural, and that's why we have so many drills to teach it, and drills that are going to be specific. It's not about doing 11 drills for one section it's about finding of those 11 drills which are the three or four that are going to work most optimally for you and now we see Geo again you can really see the difference here between Jason and Geo and look at the difference but Jason gets a little bit of a shift he gets a lot of shift he's we we had worked better at this point but you can see how he's kind of coming up blocks in a little short and again you can see how the radius, Jason has the longer radius, not bad here for Gio as he comes through. But again, look at how he's up on the block here. And again, that's all because of where that hip alignment is, which is really important for you to understand. One of the reasons we created the throwing chain reaction system is because there's so many little details. We wanted to be able to teach you a broader system for how those things work. And one of the things we go on inside the system is how we would specifically fix each and one of these problems because this was a good example of no matter who you are, everybody's individual, our system is purposely designed to help you find specifically what is going to work for you. So I thought it would be really beneficial to kind of just point out, you could see different ranges, you can see some advanced throwers, some beginning throwers, and their different experience levels and how they're all actually just doing variations of the same thing incorrectly. The more advanced guys are just doing it better, whereas the younger guys just got to learn the same principles. And you can see the difference isn't huge, but it is a big difference in your distance. Well, hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video. As you can see, there's a lot that goes into what we do with the throwing chain reaction system. If you would like to learn more about how to structure your practices and find the things that help unlock your potential, click the link below and we will see you on the next video.